It's pretty um, bad with some things and good with random, useless information. And um, what kind of things do you find yourself forgetting? Um, places and names, mostly. I can't remember anything, facts, figures. I did a history degree for crying out loud, you know, and I mean, you have to remember names and dates and stuff, I, I, I don't. <laughs> what do you think of your own memory? Uh, in short term, good, long term, bad. And what kind of things do you find that you forget? Um, names and places. Like, I forget most things short term and then they'll come back to me like a week later or something. <laughs> I've got sometimes a very good memory and sometimes a very bad memory. So it depends on the pressure of, uh, of the workload I have, on the pressure of life. And what kind of things do you find that you forget? Well, uh, I have forgotten to take my car away after I refueled uh, at my local petrol station. So Most people have a terrible view of their own memory and this is often based on personal experience. You meet somebody at a party and five seconds later you've forgotten their name or you meet somebody you can recognize the face, you can, you've seen them some time ago and you can't remember who they are. You park your car in a multi-story car park and then you spend half an hour looking for it. Arrive at the airport and you've left your tickets or your passport at home. A whole range of ways in which memory can embarrass us and let us down. And it's not surprising for that reason that when you stop people in the street and ask them what sort of a memory you've got, the majority of people will tell you that they've actually got a terrible memory. Uh, I've got a memory like a sieve, I can't remember one, one thing after another. I can, never, I can never remember a name. That's a big, big area of problem. Research has shown that forgetting names is a thing which really embarrasses people. Uh, I, I'd forget my own head if it wasn't screwed. All, all sorts of very, very negative things which people are saying about their memories. And the purpose of this morning is to show you how, in fact, you have a most fantastic memory, a most amazing memory. It's just a question of using it. Unfortunately, the brain is supplied without a, a user's manual. We have to kind of make it up as we go along. So what we're going to be doing in the course of these nine lectures and a demonstration from Dominica Brown, the world's memory champion, eight times in a row, uh, is to show you just how wonderful your brain is and how you can really develop it and use it. And the technique I'm going to teach you is one which we've evolved in our laboratories, which is called the impact technique. It's a very, very simple, it's a four-step process, terribly easy to learn. Use it, practice it, and you'll find your memory is absolutely astonishing and amazing. There are, of course, a number of myths about memory. Um, six popular myths which we've identified in our research. Uh, many people believe that some people are just naturally born with a terrible memory. You're either born with a great memory or you're born with a terrible memory and there's not much you can do about it. Um, there's little one can in do to improve a bad memory. That's obviously completely wrong. Trying to remember too much clutters your brain. That's something else a lot of people believe. Oh, I mustn't remember that. Oh, my brain will just get overflowed. It'll start pouring out of my ears, you know, this kind of thing. I mean, the fact is, most people, I have to say, um, present company perhaps accepted, most people's brains is a bit like an old attic where, you know, stuff has been put there and you go up into the attic, it's completely cluttered and you know the tennis racket or the squash racket or whatever you want to find is there somewhere. You know, the truth is out there somewhere, but you actually have got no way of remembering where you put it, and so you, you can't find it. Uh, memory inevitably, inevitably declines with age, that's another thing, uh, and it is as people get older and they start to make quite n slips, which they probably made when they were 20, and they're now perhaps 60, and they think, oh my gosh, is this uh, an onset of something terrible, something terrible is going to happen to me. So it's often a great source of anxiety. Um, to the old idea, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, well, yes you can. And a poor memory is a sign of a low IQ, and, and, and none of these things is actually true. They're all myths, but they do tend to shape our view of our memory and make us think of our memory in a very negative way. And it, in a sense, creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, the more you tell yourself, or are told by other people, or tell other people, oh, I've got a terrible mem memory, I could never learn a language, I've got such a shocking memory, I could, oh, I can't remember numbers. Well, we're now actually going to do some tests on you. Now, please don't get embarrassed by that because uh, we're not going to actually ask you to reveal your scores. These are purely for you to get a baseline on your memory, okay? And I've got a stopwatch here, and I'm going to show you each of the tests for about 20 seconds. Well, the first, the first few tests for 20 seconds. Now, the first of all, I'm going to show you a list of 20 nouns, 20 nouns randomly selected by a computer, and they're coming up on the screen now. And just look at them. Please don't make any written notes, because that is kind of not what we want you to do. We want to internalize, not externalize your memory, okay? <laughs> So here we go, and your 20 seconds starts now. 
have a look at these, these uh, 20, 20 nouns and see how many you can remember. As I say, I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to say stand up and, and, and give us your list because that would be too cruel for words. Okay, we've got another five, six seconds to go. Okay, that's 20 seconds. Right, now I wonder how many you can remember. My guess is, and I, again, I'm not going to ask you, my guess is you could probably remember things like aeroplane and probably perhaps dunce's cap, and maybe at the end of the list you could remember something like oak trees, catapults, television, stuff like that. And that is commonly what happens when you're given a list like that. It's what we call the primacy and recency effect. You remember best what you hear first, and what you hear last. And the greatest interference of memory occurs in the middle. And that's why professional speakers are sometimes told um, that you should tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. And that's kind of a three structure for making a presentation to somebody. You start off by saying, this is what we're going to be covering in this next 10, 15 minutes. Then you cover it, and at the end you recap. And this will help the primacy and recent effect. Okay, now let's look at another list. Again, this is a kind of a shopping list you might have. And I'm going to give you 20 seconds again. So I'd like you to look at that list. Imagine you're going off down to the, uh, to the Walmart or supermarket or whatever, and you're going to purchase those things. And if you would stop talking, it'd be an awful lot easier for me to remember this list. And uh, you're about 15 seconds in now, and just see how many of those you can actually remember. And that's 20 seconds. OK. Again, you probably had a primacy and recency effect on that. You can remember the stuff at the beginning of the list, perhaps one or two things at the end. But if I was to offer you 50 quid to give me that list perfectly, uh, forward from the well, eggs and, and or backwards from the last word, I think most of you, my money would be probably quite safe. But rest assured, by the end of this morning, my, memory would, my money would be completely unsafe because all of you could do all that with the greatest of ease. Now let's move on to the uh, area of great social embarrassment for most people, remembering names and faces. I'm going to show you six faces and six names with them, and then I'm going to show you the same, na the same faces uh, in a, in a mixed-up sequence and see how many of these you can remember. And as you're looking at them, I'll tell you a little bit about this person. <coughs> now, this is Jill Stonia, and she's a beautician. Okay, now you've met her at the party. Say, hello, Jill. Hello, Jill. Right, now let's move on to the next one. This is a guy called Frank Paris. Frank Paris uh, is an actor and a male model. And now we're moving on to the third person you're meeting, Betty MacDonald, lovely lady, everybody's sort of ideal grandmother, and in fact she used to be a school secretary. Now we're moving on to the next one, Mark, uh, Adam Markson. Uh, he is actually a high-altitude particle physicist. Okay, and so we now we move on to others. And this is Adele Green, Adele Green is a teacher, lovely lady. And finally, we've got Philip Driver, and Philip Driver is now retired, but he used to run his own engineering company. He's the CEO of an engineering company. Okay, now then, uh, I'm going to show you the faces again in a different order, see how many of these you can actually remember and, and what their occupations were. Uh, you just met him again. You've met him five seconds after you've met him at the <laughs> cocktail party. Right, okay, here's another lovely lady. As I said, everybody's ideal grandmother. Uh, there we are with the third lady. Another lady, I mean. There we have this chap. And now we have this chap. <laughs> and then we have this lady. And that's the end of that. Now, how many, you know, you met them. Hey, I told you about Hi, I'm, you know, I'm Frank Adamson. Or I'm a high altitude particle physicist. Okay, this is a final test. A final test. And then you're going to have something completely different. Uh, this is a test for numbers. Now, here is a number. This is a 14 decimal number. This, as many of you will recognize, is pi. And uh, probably when you were at school, or certainly when you were at school, you dealt with pi. Probably not 14 decimal places. Of course, pi being an irrational number can go on forever, but we've, we've chopped it off at 14 decimals. Supposing you had, uh, supposing I said, right, I'll give you 50 pounds if you can remember this number in 20 seconds and get it perfect and then perhaps go from the, go from the nine and work forward to the three. So I'll, uh, I will give you a little bit longer to have a look at that number because I don't actually think it's going to do you much good at this point. <laughs> <laughs> quite, I'm quite willing to be generous on that. Okay, so that is the, those are the memory tests. Now we should go back on those memory tests at the end of this morning and you will be amazed at how easy it is to remember all those things. It'd be something you can impress your friends with, or bore the pants off them, or whatever. But now here's a man for whom um, that test would actually be a light aperitif before he sat down to a full-course banquet. This is 
uh, an amazing chap called Dominic O'Brien, who's very kindly uh, agreed to come down from London to talk to us here today. He's eight-time world memory champion, and he's going to actually show you some things which are absolutely uh, uh, amazing and astonish you. So uh, I'd like you to welcome, when he walks into the room, Dominic O'Brien. Yes. Thank you very much.